Hello guys, in this video I will review VS Code as AI code editor because everyone is talking about cursor, about other IDEs which are forks of VS Code. What about the original VS Code with GitHub Copilot? Has it got better? Because when cursor appeared it was massively better than VS Code but they got much better with GitHub Copilot. And in this video I will compare side by side VS Code versus cursor with the same Claude Sonnet 4, with the same code base and same prompts. So we will talk about UX and pricing difference at the end of this video. But for now let's test both in action. So I have cloned the same code base in VS Code and in cursor folders and let's ask a few questions with the prompts to both of them. This is my typical kind of minimum test for all IDEs. How do they answer questions? How do they perform small refactoring or bigger refactoring? So let's start with asking VS Code and cursor what are the versions of Laravel and Tailwind in this code base. And I will try to launch it almost at the same time so you will see even the speed. So enter and enter here and collecting information who will be the faster basically VS Code or cursor. Used references. Yep, cursor already has something. VS Code is still trying to come up with that and the answer is actually incorrect. This is a surprise to me actually because during my testing offline it was correct a few times so now it shows Laravel 11 so it didn't even look at composer JSON of Laravel and cursor is looking at composer JSON and package JSON and providing correct answer. So wow I'm kind of shocked by VS Code. Wow. Okay, next test. So in the tasks table I have a column description which I want to remove because it's too long. Let's see how VS Code and Cursor deal with that query, with that prompt. Remove the description. There's actually a typo here. And again I will launch it at the same time and see what happens. So send and send. I deliberately didn't add any contact specific file to test whether they will both find the actual files that are needed. Blade, more context. Okay, they seem to all do similar files, similar things. Remove description, one out of three tasks. And this time VS Code made the change quicker. Now it's working on the show page. I didn't really ask for that, but both of those went not only to index blade but show blade. I asked just for the table. So yeah, VS Code is done and cursor as well. So roughly same time and probably roughly same result. Let's check index blade. So yeah, remove the description, remove the column and change the call span. In cursor there are actually four changes. So header, then column, then call span and also in the show blade also remove the description although I didn't specifically ask for it. My prompt was about in the tasks table but actually maybe it's my fault because technically in the show blade it's also a table, HTML table so VS Code interpreted it as needed to change and if we look at cursor it also touched show blade but decided to not make the changes here. So yeah a little bit different results but to be honest the prompt was not specific enough in my opinion. So this is kind of my fault and this is actually general pattern when working with AIs. It's not about tools that much but it's a lot about your prompt and the context. In other words you get the output based on how accurate your input is. And the third test, the biggest one is to change the database relationship which fundamentally cascades into more changes across multiple files. So in the task form instead of picking one user I want to pick multiple users so I will prompt the same thing to cursor. In fact it's a different syntax and cursor for referencing the file. So in this case it's at task PHP for cursor for VS Code it's hash task PHP. But yeah the prompt is the same, the context is the same. I didn't specify any rules or guidelines intentionally so it would be apples to apples comparison. And this probably will take longer like five to ten minutes for all the changes and I will stop on important things. What would the IDEs do differently? So enter here and enter here. So yeah to-do list in cursor, VS Code doesn't give you the to-do list and the first change by VS Code and the first change by cursor they are roughly at the same pace 
changing the task model first. Then I need to approve creating the migration. In cursor case, oh, I enabled auto run. So it would be faster with cursor just because I don't need to approve anything. So I will watch VS Code closer for any prompts. And actually interesting thing about VS Code, if it prompts to confirm something, it will show the operating system notification. The Mac icon should jump the VS Code icon. So I'll wait for that. So yeah, see VS Code jumping. So I need to confirm something. And this is interesting. Continue to iterate max request. It seems to be 25 requests before I need to continue to approve the further request. It reminds me of first days of cursor. There also used to be 25 requests until you need to approve that basically one more AI request, AI token should be used. So VS Code also does that. And later we will compare the prices actually. Interestingly, point number six, create tests and cursor is at the same point now, task controller tests. So they're roughly at the same pace. It's actually even thinking in the same terms. So for example, cursor checks if there are other references to the old user relationship and VS Code also at the same time, check if there are other references to old relationships. So roughly same plan because under the hood, it's Claude for Sonnet. So make test, another test, or in fact, it's running test. So PHP Artisan test with cursor. It has run the test automatically, but it didn't succeed. So failures with the tests. This is happening basically to all LLMs and all AIs if they generate the test they rarely succeed at the first attempt. So that's why for this specific task, as I tested it in multiple IDEs, it usually takes like five minutes to generate the code and then another five minutes to fix the test and make them run properly with successful result. Because then it appears that the test is failing because of some relationship missing, some soft deletes, something like that. All tests are now passing in VS Code and also similarly in Cursor. Summary of changes. So Cursor is done and with VS Code, it will take a bit longer because I need to confirm everything and I don't need PHP Artisan Serve. So yeah, if I skip, if I cancel that, it doesn't even go further and confirm that it was actually changed. But yeah, the result is 13 files changed. And if we took a look at the visual result, what VS Code did, do we have users, no users assigned. And if we go to edit, there's multiple multi-select, update task, does it work? Test admin plus one more. This is interesting UX decision to not show the full list. In case of cursor, what is the result? Yep, so it shows badges. So UX decision is a bit better to select it. Whoa, I like that UX check boxes with select drop down decision, update task. Did it work? Yep, it did work plus one more. So cursor seems to go one extra step to make the UI a bit better. And if we compare the files changed, cursor has 15 changes and it also conveniently shows the amount of lines changed in VS Code it's 13 files changed and I don't see how much it was changed unless I go up and see the exact numbers here but let's take a look for example at task controller what are the changes here so in VS Code the changes are legit as I see in cursor, same task controller. If we go here, pretty similar changes with a bit different structure of variables, but also pretty similar. Okay, so I approve the changes, they both work. But in both cases, it took roughly 10 minutes, as I said, five minutes to write the code and then five minutes for verifying the tests. But actually with the tests, cursor generated both feature test and unit test as well, which is more work, but better for the overall result. And now let's talk about how many tokens did we actually use? What was the price? So in GitHub Copilot here, you can click on the icon at the bottom right and it will show you the premium requests. I'm currently on trial for premium requests and I have 2.3% before this test, it was 1.3%. So I've used 1% of my premium requests 
and if I calculate correctly $10 per month it means that I've used $10 cents for this set of three questions. In case of cursor it shows 49.4% context used for this last third question and if we go to dashboard cursor shows it conveniently how many tokens were used so our three tests here were in total roughly 2 million tokens but what does that actually mean? We have API cost here the approximate price as I would pay if I used it directly with API pricing for Sonnet 4 and if we refresh the page now the price should be different 2309. So see the difference. I didn't pay that exact amount yet, but it was included in my $20 cursor plan, which is actually not exactly $20. This is very interesting and very weird. So at some point at roughly $40 or so, it will tell me that I have run out of credit. So there is no specific number. Some people report it stops at $40 for some is 25. Some of them are astronomically high. There is no specific number here. But anyway, $2.30 means roughly 10% of requests on $20 plan versus 1% on GitHub Copilot with VS Code. And this may be the main differentiator. So if I go to pricing for GitHub Copilot in VS Code, the price is $10 per month. For cursor, it's at least $20, which you run out of pretty quickly because the pricing is actually close to API price. And the quality of the code isn't that different. As you saw in a few tests, for Laravel version VS Code failed, but for generating the code or making the changes or refactoring, it's roughly similar. It's good enough. Some of the differences in the change versus cursor are personal preference. Or maybe cursor sometimes does extra mile with like extra 10 or 20% for better UX or UI or generating extra test or something like that. But you may be also happy with VS Code and Copilot results with much cheaper pricing. So VS Code with Copilot is cheaper than Cursor, is cheaper than Claude Code, is cheaper than Augment and a lot of other IDEs with AI, except for I found one cheaper than GitHub Copilot or on par, it's Tray AI, which I haven't tested yet. If you have used it, then tell me in the comments below, is it good? So this one is also $10 per month for 600 fast requests. So yeah, all in all, what I wanted to say in this video is that VS Code is kind of a proof that most of those IDEs at the moment are good enough with Sonnet 4 under the hood. And the main differentiators between them are two, basically pricing and some UX. And if we compare VS Code versus Cursor as IDE, this is where Cursor shines in terms of autocomplete, which was always the differentiator of Cursor since the very beginning when it appeared on the scene. So for example, if in one method I need to have autocomplete from VS Code, if I expect the autocomplete from VS Code, I start typing, no autocomplete yet, and there is autocomplete, only when I provide the function. Then yeah, it's good. Then I hit tab. In cursor, as soon as I hit this, in many cases, it already knows what I'm typing next. Magically, sometimes scary accurate. So if your goal for this project is to write code a lot, then cursor is better because it will autocomplete for you faster. But for a agentic use case, almost like vibe coding, then you wouldn't feel that much difference. So is the IDE functionality better than another IDE, which gets us back to the IDE worse before the AI. So what do you prefer VS Code or PHP Storm or Vim or something else? So what do you guys think about VS Code with GitHub Copilot? If you were a VS Code user before the AI, did you switch to cursor or cloud code or something else? Or did you stick to VS Code and it got better and you're happy with the results? Let's discuss in the comments below. If you want to stay updated on the latest news about AI coding, I have a newsletter, a free newsletter. I send that every Wednesday. So you can subscribe to that. The link will be in the description below. That's it for this time and see you guys in other videos.